Today's lesson is called How to Estimate with Long Division. All right, let's say that Gavin's family was piling into the car, van, whatever vehicle they have, and going on a road trip. And there's Gavin, very happy to be in the car. And let's say that they were taking a trip to Texas and that they wanted to go from one city in Texas to another. So Gavin got out a map and he found out that the distance between El Paso to San Antonio is 551 miles. Yikes! That's a long drive. And Gavin's parents are taking turns driving, and they're both very good drivers, and they like to obey the speed limit and the law. So they're traveling at 62 miles per hour. MPH means miles per hour. So how long can Gavin expect to sit in his family's van until he makes it to San Antonio? Well, we've got a division problem here. We've got 551 miles that are going to be divided up into 62-mile groups. Every hour, they travel 62 miles, a group of 62. So we have a division problem. 551 divided by 62. Now, the first thing we should always do so that you can ask yourself, does this make sense? is estimate. It should be a 30 second quick estimate. So one way that you can do this is you can look at your divisor here, the 62, and round that off to the nearest 10. In this case, it would be 60. Now, we're working with a six. So can I tweak this dividend, the big daddy dividend, to be compatible with a six, maybe a nice friendly number. Well, I'm looking at 55. Mm, six times nothing gets me 55, but ooh, I could get to 54. Six times what is 54? Six times nine is 54. So it might be smart to change this into a 540 because now my 54 is compatible or friendly with the six. And now I can divide using mental math and some of the secrets that we learned before. So when we've got the big daddy dividend and the sneaky divisor, and they both have zeros in them, first thing we do is cancel out those zeros. And we are left with just 54 divided by six. So 54 divided by six is nine. But nine what? Nine Gavins? Nine cars? Nine places in Texas? nine miles per hour. Mm -mm. How long is it going to take his family? Nine hours. About nine hours. There are other ways to estimate too though. Check it out. You can use rounding as long as you end up rounding and getting compatible numbers. So again, we could change the 62 into a 60. And then we could take a look at this 551 and see if we could round it off maybe to the nearest hundreds place in a way that would still be compatible with this six right here. So yeah, we could change that into a 600. Now we know we're really tweaking the numbers a lot by going to 600. But 600 then divided by 60. We can do our trick with zeros cancel out from our divisor and our dividend, and we have one left over that we can put on the end of our quotient. So we have now six divided by six is one, and place a zero makes it 10, or just 60 divided by six is 10. So in this case, it looks like Gavin's trip is not gonna take about nine hours, but is gonna take about 10 hours. So it would make sense to say that Gavin's trip would take between 9 and 10 hours. So those are a couple of different ways 
to estimate. That way, when we go to solve the real problem, we can ask ourselves, does this make sense? So let's solve this problem for real. Now that we've got some estimates, 9 and 10 are our estimates. So here's a way that we can set up this division problem to find out the exact answer. Usually estimates, they, they really are good enough, but if we were finding the exact number of hours that it was going to take Gavin's family to get from El Paso to San Antonio, Texas, we could set up a long division problem knowing that our answer should be around 9 or 10 hours. All right, so... In previous years, you might have called this hangman division. That is slang. We are not using math slang. This is going to be the partial quotients method. The partial quotients method. So let's think about this. We had a couple of estimates. Maybe we can use our estimates to figure out what our first step should be. That's why we should always estimate first. We said that 10 groups of 60 would make 600. Well, we definitely don't have 600 miles here to work with. Um, we also said that 6 times 9 was 54, which is really close to 55. So maybe starting with 9 groups might be a smart move. So let's try out nine groups of 62. Now you could go over here and you could go 62 times nine and figure it out that way. I like partial products here. Nine groups of two is 18. Nine groups of 60 would be 540. Ooh, we're gonna be close. Add those partials together. Oh, 558. Do we have enough? No, we only have 551. Well, that means if nine groups was too many, what should we bump this down to? An eight. And maybe eight groups of 62 can be taken out of the 551 miles that they have to travel. So 62 times eight, I'll do partial products again. Eight times two is 16, and eight times 60, well, eight times six, six times eight is 48, and place a zero. Let's see, we've got a six, a nine, and a four. Yeah, we can take eight groups of 62 out. That's just 496. That's definitely doable. So let's subtract. Can't take away six from one, so I can regroup here, make that an 11. 11 minus six is five. Can't take nine groups away from four, so I can regroup here. Bring that 10 over and make it a 14 minus nine is five. 55. Can I take out another group of 62? Nope. So here's our quotient, eight, and 55 is the remainder. Hmm. Or 55 out of the 62. So we can see that this is, and this is ours, we can see that, man, that fraction it's really close to being a whole number, which would mean this would be nine hours. And we saw this here. That estimate was a really good close estimate because the nine got us just a little bit over. So we can see that, yeah, this does make sense. It wasn't in between our nine hours or our 10 hour estimate. It's really close to our nine hour estimate. So almost nine hours, a little bit less, as long as they don't, you know, stop for snacks and rest stops and porta potty stops and all that good stuff. But the driving alone will be a little bit under nine hours. Well, Gavin, I hope you're ready. That's a long time in the car. <laughs> Let's try another one. All right, time for some calendar math. Yay! So we know that there are seven days in a week.
We know that. That's a fact. So what if we use that fact to also figure out how many weeks there are in 3,040 days? <laughs> how many weeks are in 3,040 days? So if you have all those days and you want to chunk them and group them into seven day groups, we're gonna have groups that each have seven days in them. Whew. Okay, let's get an estimate so that that way we know what maybe our first step should be in the long division. And also we can ask ourselves when we get our final answer, does this uh, make sense? All right. I'd like to keep the seven the same. What could we then tweak this bigger, big daddy dividend to be compatible with the seven? Because here I see a 30. Is seven compatible with 30? Mm, no, but could I get close without going over? Seven times four is 28. That's really close. So why don't I change that into a 28? with two more zeros after it. Because that way I know that the 28 and the seven are compatible. They're friendly with each other. So 28 divided by seven would be four. And I have two zeros to place. Okay, so our estimate is about 400. About 400. This could also be written like this. We can see that the seven times four is 28 and two more zeros. So a couple of different ways to show your estimates, but we're looking at about 400. So that might be a good first digit to be considering when we go to do our partial quotients. So our estimate around 400. Let's set up those partial quotients. And I know it looks like a hangman's noose, but we're not calling it that because we are math pros in here. Hey, could that estimate help us here? Yeah, it definitely could. Four times seven is 28. And I'd love that 28 to be right under the 30 in the thousands and hundreds place. But if I'm going to shove it over there and give it a shove, that means I also need to place two extra zeros. I'm compensating here. By placing two extra zeros here, that also means that in my partial quotient, I also need two extra zeros. So now instead of just taking four groups of seven, I'm taking 400 groups of seven, which would be 2,800 and pulling those out. It's a much bigger chunk, which means my problem's gonna get solved faster. All right, let's subtract and see what it looks like when that big chunk of 2,800 is taken out. Hopefully we all got 240. Okay, so now what? What's the next step? We're not done yet. We can still take more chunks of seven out. How many groups of seven might we be able to take out of 240? Well, don't go deer in headlights here. I know 240 is kind of a big number, but let's just look at it in place value. Two, that's uh, not helpful. 24, hmm, any numbers? that are close to 24 that we could do by multiplying seven times something gets me close to 24. Hmm. Ooh, seven times three gets me to 21. I like that. And I've given it a shove over there so it can be the biggest chunk, which means I've got to place an extra zero there. And if I place an extra zero here, we also need one in our partial quotient. So if we're gonna compensate by powers of 10, we need to make sure that we're doing it in both places. So now I haven't taken three groups of seven, I'm taking 30 groups of seven out, which is a much bigger chunk, which means I'm gonna finish my problem faster. Yes. And when we subtract, we're left with 30. Now we're in fast fact territory, which is really nice. Okay, I need something close to 30, hey. Didn't I do something close to 30 over here? <laughs> it's nice when that works out. Seven times four is 28. 
Take out that chunk and we're left with just two. We'll do the dotted line for the remainder. So we've got our remainder, two sevenths. Remember, it's not quite enough to be a whole group on its own. A whole group would have seven in it. This group only has two. If it had five more little pieces, it would be a whole, another seven. But it's not, it's only two sevenths of a group. And we need to add up all of these partial quotients. And look at that, it's an expanded form. I've got hundreds, tens, ones, 434. 434 and 2 sevenths. So we go back to our problem to remind us of what it is that we're solving. We're trying to figure out how many weeks are in this many days. And it didn't come out evenly. We've got a remainder. We've got a part of a week, and that's okay. Two sevenths of a week, in fact, which means two extra days. <laughs> but if we're looking at about how many weeks, okay, we've got our about. We should also look back at our estimate. Our estimate was about 400. So let's use that to check our answer before we say, yep, got it, done, ready to move on. Our answer that we got was 434. So what do you think? Close enough? Yeah, close enough. And we need our label here. 434 and 2 sevenths weeks. Which means 434 whole weeks and then two extra days left over. And that's our final answer. So this lesson shows why estimating can be very helpful for making your very, very first move and for checking your answer and making sure that it makes sense when you're finally ready. We also had a review on how to use partial quotients, especially looking at the zeros here and wanting to take the biggest chunk over. So we've had a review on partial quotients we learned about why estimating is important, two reasons why, is estimating, why estimating is important, and hopefully you're feeling more confident with this. Ready for your task? Well, ready or not, here it comes. Mrs. Telesta has a bag full of popcorn to share with her class. She wants to be fair, so she wants to know how many curdles everyone should get. She and her helper want to snack too. So that means that 32 people need to equally share a bag with 800 popped kernels in it. How many kernels does each person get? So we have a division problem here. 800 divided by 32. First things first, make a 30 second estimate. 30 second estimate then actually solve the problem. You will be sharing what you came up with with your groups tomorrow. Maybe you solve it in different ways and that's great, but I want you to use partial quotients to solve this problem. Have fun.